I just got done in the carpool line dropping off our one little guy at school. We have one child that has chosen to do public school this year and we have five homeschooling kiddos. So life is busy just like it is at your house, but I wanted to share with you today a few of the large family tips and tricks that I have picked up over the years that help us to stay organized and keep things running smoothly in our house. So I thought it'd be fun just to share those tips with you today. This tip is one that has saved my sanity numerous times. Our living room in our old house was really tiny and it was the room that you walked into when you opened the front door. And so I have always liked to keep my living room very clean. Our living room in this house is quite a bit bigger, but it's still the kind of one of the first rooms that you see. So I like to keep it really straightened up. And that's hard to do with six kiddos running around and lots of people living in the house. But what I have done is I have put a basket at the bottom of the staircase that goes up to the kids' rooms. And I have placed another basket at the, on the staircase that goes downstairs to the playroom. The toys live either upstairs or downstairs. And so I use those baskets and drop things in there that go whichever direction. So that makes tidying up the living room super quick and easy because I'm not gonna do it if I have to run the stairs a million times and take things to everybody's rooms. So then the kids' toys stay in those baskets until I have somebody come and clean them out or I have all the kids come and get their stuff out of the baskets and go put it away. Um, normally when we clean up the playroom downstairs, we try to grab that basket and take it down there and clean up those toys as well. So that's just a super easy tip to keep rooms cleaned up. My next tip, and I think I've showed this one before, is the cup tray. We use a cup tray on the counter and that is where all the cups should be contained. This helps from having cups all over the entire kitchen that kids have used. It also helps so that they use only one cup a day and hopefully don't go find the second or the third cup because they can't find their first one. So this one has been a real sanity saver. We've tried just having a spot on the counter for cups and that does not work. Like it has to be something that kind of contains them that says they have to sit here in this boundary, in this space. And the kids will typically put cups there. After meals, that's where cups go. When you get a drink, then you put your cup back there. Now, I and Monty do not keep our cups on the cup tray because the kids are notorious for just slurping down whatever drink we have, typically water and um, always drinking out of our cups. Then who gets sick every time a kid gets sick? I do. So I kind of keep my cup on the top of the fridge typically, or I keep my tea in the fridge on a high shelf so that nobody drinks out of it. Um, they don't tend to drink out of each other's cups. They just tend to drink out of mine and sometimes Monty's. So we keep our cups up on top of the fridge. <laughs> I know. Another great tip is one that I often forget, and that is to sing instead of shout. When I feel like yelling because there's so much chaos and I cannot get their attention, singing often works. I used to tease that, and I did this on occasion, but when my kids were littler, I would just start marching around singing Sing Ho to the Life of the Bear. If any of you watch Winnie the Pooh, you know the song, and I would just march. If I wanted them to go somewhere, I would just march past them. If they were ignoring me, I'd march past them singing Sing Ho to the Life of the Bear, Sing Ho to the Expedition, and off we went. And I would just slowly get one, two, three, four, five kids following me, and off we would go, and I would march to where I wanted them to be, and we would get started on what we wanted to start doing. So sometimes you have to be super creative, but singing instead of shouting is so much more pleasant for everyone, including yourself. So there's often times when I'll sing a little silly song to get them to do what I want them to do next. I'll sing what's, what it's time for next or whatever, but remembering to sing in, when you feel like shouting is super helpful and reduces the chaos. So when we moved into this house a few years ago, um, we went from a house with virtually no storage and 
teeny tiny closets, if closets at all, because it was a house from the 1800s, um, to a house with tons of storage and walk-in closets in every room and every hallway and everywhere. And I love all the storage in this house. So we have a ton of storage compared to what we had. We use these cabinets here for much of the clothing of the kids. So that is super helpful. Um, and that leaves some closets open for us. So, you know, not a wasted space from this large family mama. So I use those closets as toy closets and I'm gonna show you what they look like. This is one of my favorite tricks and I know, I know, believe me, I know that not everybody has access or extra storage in their house and I am so thankful for that in this house. I don't know what I'll do someday when we move and I don't have that anymore. I probably won't have as many kids either. So um, anyway, I'm gonna show you. This is our toy closet that's in our hallway and this keeps our kids' toy or our kids' rooms pretty much toy free in the main part of the room. Um, I did this toy closet because my boys, a bunch of my boys were sharing a room, so it was pretty much wall-to-wall -wall beds, and there was not room for toys in the room. But we wanted some toys accessible upstairs for them to use, like during room time or rest time, things like that to have access to. And so we made a toy closet in the hallway. The idea is that they get one or two things out of the toy closet, and then um, when they're done with them, they put them away and so the room stays pretty much toy free. This doesn't always work out. Sometimes toys get left in their room and if I'm not diligent to make sure that they're cleaning them up, then it doesn't always happen, but it cuts way down on the clutter in the room. So this leads me to the next tip, which is to use room time. Um, we do room time one to two times a day and that is a time where the kids go and play individually in their room. So this allows me a little bit of time to get some things done. It also separates kids, which when you have a lot of kids, you know that it's kind of necessary at some points in the day to have everybody separated. Just for your own sanity, for their sanity, it helps so much. So we do room time. So I'm gonna show you what Jackson's doing in his room, and then I'm gonna also show you Grayson's toy closet, which is kind of fun. His is a Lego closet, and it's where he keeps his Legos. Knock, knock. Hey, Jackson, can I come in and film you a minute? Yes. Yes. Okay, Jackson's doing room time, and he's picked some things out of the toy closet. What did you pick today, Jackson? Did you pick your town rug? And he's setting up his little city with his town? And you're playing in your room, aren't you, buddy? Yeah, so this leaves a big open space in their room for playing because they don't have all those shelves with toys in here. Also kind of helps with the mess to keep it contained. Very cool. So Grayson's working in here on cleaning up his closet. So it's not perfectly clean how he wants it, but I'm ready to show it to you. Mm -hmm. So um, this is his Lego table and it was an old train table that we moved in here to use for his Lego table. And he keeps his barn and some stuff in here that he likes to play with and a special bulletin board in here. So this is kind of his little personal play space. Oakley's invading, isn't she? And this is where he keeps his personal toys that he likes to play with. So this gives him his individual space. Another great tip and one I am so thankful that we can do in this house is to use this garage for playtime for the kids. In this house, our garage is actually, um, has house above it and house around it and so it stays pretty warm in the winter and pretty cool in the summertime. And so if it's too hot to be outside or too cold to be outside or too rainy to be outside or like in the last few days the wind has been like 30 to 40 miles per hour. It's just too windy to be pleasant outside. We use this space to let the littler kids run around, scream, and get lots of energy out. So that is super helpful. It's also helpful if like for Jackson, he wants to ride bike or play outside and I just can't supervise him at the moment, I will have him go do it in the garage for a little bit until I'm available to be outside with him. So that is a super helpful tip that we have used over the last few years. Hopefully you heard a tip or two that'll be helpful to your family too. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.